They set everything up, got this house finished in 1854. Uh, he, it was a cotton plantation, and he was the second largest slaveholder in this part of the country, but in each slave store, and you don't hear many, when the Civil War was over and President Lincoln freed the slaves, well, Mr. Hambrick deeded 3,100 of his 3,300 acres to his slaves. And when we moved here 21 or two years ago, we were pretty much white family in a black neighborhood. Neatest people you ever met. And these were like third and fourth generation descendants from the plantation. They all knew where their land came from. They are real beholden to the plantation. In fact, they watch this closer than we do. It's really kind of neat. And uh, we've had two really neat programs in the, not this year, because it's been a crazy year for everything, but last year, uh, in February, which is Black History Month, we had a Black History uh, program out here. We had about 300 people, and uh, Colonel Allen West was our speaker, and it was really neat. It was a really, really positive thing, and then in June, we had a slave family reunion, and we'd all gotten together with all of our neighbors and all, and they had, uh, they worked on it a lot harder than we did, and they uh, came up, they had 14 different families that were represented that had been slaves on the plantation. And it was neat, each family had their own t-shirts with their own colors and names, and I mean, it was great. And uh, I had each family send up one member and tell how they had progressed over the years up till today. And uh, one of them, uh, Mr. Kennedy, uh, he is the head oncologist in Chicago today. Uh, I have one girl named Joan Hubert. She's an opera singer. She lives in Houston and done fabulous things with her voice. And then one girl named Kathy Hambrick. She lives in Donaldsonville, Louisiana, and she uh, uh, has an African slave museum. And it's it's the neatest thing. If y'all ever get to Donaldsonville, Louisiana, you need, it's on a river road between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. It is really neat. She has one, one wall in, in one of the rooms. It's like 15 feet tall, and it's a whole map of the Mississippi River and from the top to the bottom. And they've outlined all of the different plantations that were up and down the Mississippi, and they're identifying all the different slaves that were on the uh, plantations. They're really neat. It's, uh, it's a great thing. And, uh, but these people, it's, it's really kind of sad because a lot of the people that lived here when we moved here have passed on and their kids have moved on to Dallas or someplace to make their fortunes, but they're really neat. One, one, uh, one guy that lives here is named Jesse Caldwell. Jesse, uh, his, his uh, ancestors were the, I don't know what you call them, they were the number one slaves. They, it was Al Hill was his name. And Al Hill um, was uh, on the plantation here, and, but after, it was, after they were all freed, uh, he, Mr., something else Mr. Hambrick did, he built them a school which is not normal. They didn't normally do that uh, because the more education you have, the more freedoms you desire. So it, it didn't do a lot of that, but he